Welcome to week four of our Life Together series. Today, we're going to be talking about prayer. Have you ever asked a question like this one? If God knows everything, then why should I bother with prayer? Doesn't he already know what I'm going to ask? Or maybe this one. What am I supposed to even say when I pray? I don't feel like I have the right words for the God of the universe. Or even this one. Am I really supposed to pray even when I mess up and sin against God? Why would he even want to hear from me? Recently, I was thinking back to the time where my son started to learn his very first words and the joy that my wife and I felt as his parents whenever he decided that he wanted to tell us something. He would come up to us and, and he would be so excited and he would just start babbling. And, and we could tell in his mind that he was trying to say something, but we had no idea what it actually was. We all know this feeling, though, don't we, of someone that we love calling our name because they just have something to tell us. This is the way that I think about prayer. That it's less about saying everything perfectly, less about getting everything right, less about whether he knows what we're going to say or not, and more about simply spending time with God, the thing that every good father longs for the most. And so today, we're going to be talking about why prayer matters. Individually, for those of us who have put our faith in Jesus and decided to surrender our lives to him, and for you as a group of people who are going through life together. Think for a moment about the person that you have been closest to throughout your life. Maybe a spouse, a parent, a close friend, someone who really knows you. How did that relationship form? By spending time with each other, by talking to each other and doing things together, by learning about their likes and their dislikes, their hopes and their fears. Their passions, their past, quality time is the lifeblood of any relationship. The way that your relationship with your spouse, your parents, your kids, your grandkids, whoever it is, flourishes. The same thing is true in our relationship with God. In fact, this is what prayer is. Prayer is the gift of quality time with the one who has created us. A reminder that the God of the universe wants to have a conversation with me. What's interesting as we look at the life of Jesus is that we see the very same thing in his relationship with his heavenly father. We see this all over the gospel accounts that even in the midst of the most productive three years in history, Jesus consistently prioritized slowing down and getting away and simply sitting in the presence of God. Luke 5 is my favorite example of this. In this one chapter alone, Jesus calls his first disciples. He heals a man with leprosy. He heals another man who is paralyzed and forgives his sins. He confronts religious leaders. And yet right in the middle of all of this action, we see this little line that's so important. This is Luke chapter 5 in verse 15. The news about him spread even more, and large crowds would come together to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. Yet he often withdrew to deserted places and prayed. Do you see that? Even in the busyness, Jesus' public ministry was fueled, rooted, and grounded by his private relationship with God, that he would pray, not because he had to, but because he longed to have quality time with his dad. And this is the point, that if Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior, built these rhythms into his life, how much more should we? Earlier in the series, we talked about the importance of community. This idea that we are created for relationships, that life is better when we have people in our lives to walk alongside us. But here we see that human relationships are not enough. That Jesus knew what we must know as well, that there is something that happens in times of prayer. Something that happens when we build this rhythm into our lives. Something about going to a quiet place and sitting in the presence of our Heavenly Father that renews us, and refreshes us and restores our souls. For some of us, this is a very different way of thinking about prayer, isn't it? So often for us today, prayer resembles something much closer to a heavenly wish list, where we present our requests to God for good health, for safety, for provision. And there's nothing wrong with that being a part of your prayer life. Scripture tells us to cast our cares on him because he cares for us. A prayer was always meant to be more. David Platt put it this way, that the primary purpose of prayer is not to get something, but to be with someone. Prayer is not a weapon we wield to get our way or to accomplish our will. It's not about God's power joining our side. It's about us joining his. It's about being present with the one who loves us. 
This is the opportunity that we have, not just individually, but for you as a group today. One of the things that we desire for all of our groups is that they would be marked by prayer. That whenever you come together, you would take time to partner together in lifting up each other's hopes and dreams, hurts and fears, anxieties and plans to God. That this is one of the most impactful ways that we can fulfill the command that we are given in Galatians 6 to carry one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. Now, I know that for some of us, prayer is something that we are used to only doing in private or maybe not at all, and that's okay. Nobody is expecting perfection. But each of us is invited to grow, to take a step, to be courageous, knowing that in prayer, we are not judged by the eloquence of our words, but the desire of our hearts. That just as I wouldn't think less of my son for not knowing how to say a word correctly, your Heavenly Father isn't looking for some spiritual formula. He simply wants to hear from you, his son or his daughter. This is why we are so convinced that belonging to a group is so important because this is something that all of us will need at some point. And when you have a doctor's appointment, a big interview, an exam, a tough conversation at work or at home, that these would be the people that you can call on to lift you up in prayer, that you would know that you are not alone, that you have people to strengthen you, walk with you, celebrate you in your victories, and grieve with you in your defeats. This is what we're here for, to have soul-level friendships that go deeper than the surface, that truly walk through life together. And this is our hope for your group, that you would not only experience that, but you would do the same for others, that when you get that text or that call from the person sitting next to you, that you would pray for that person and then ask if you can be a part of meeting that need. So today, this is going to be the focus of the rest of your time together to talk about the place, the purpose, and the importance of prayer in your relationship with God and as a group together. Here are the two things that I'll ask you to do. First, to take a step of vulnerability with those around you. I know that as we talk about carrying each other's burdens and sharing our lives so that we can be supported in prayer, that there might be a part of you, just like there's a part of me that wants to hold back. I might share that safe prayer request, but hold back on the thing that's truly on my heart and mind. And that's natural, and it takes time to grow trust and safety in a group. But today, would you consider just taking one step, sharing one thing? Would you remember that the people around you cannot love the person that you hide from them? Vulnerability is necessary to being truly known and truly loved. Second, would you remember that this is a sacred opportunity, that in prayer you are entering into the presence of God. Prayer is not an opportunity for gossip, not something to simply go through the motions of, not a box to check off. It is the gift of quality time, a chance to speak to your Heavenly Father, to listen to His Spirit, to sit in the loving presence of the one who created you, who longs to hear his children's voice. Blessings to you as you discuss this incredible opportunity and lift each other up in prayer today.